Smartphones have become an essential part of our daily lives, at home and when we travel. They've also become very expensive. And your phone probably contains a lot of sensitive information that you may or may not be properly protecting. Today, we are talking about cell phone security, since traveling with smartphones presents some additional risks to you, your stuff, and your data. I'll cover travel security tips and things to watch out for to prevent phone theft, ways to protect your information that's on your phone, and what to do if your phone is stolen. And remember, your phone could still be in your hand, but your information could be at risk. I'll give you two solid techniques to make sure that that is not a problem for you. Let's do this. I started traveling full time before smartphones really existed. I had a flip phone that was useless, comparatively speaking, to today. These days, I'm not even sure how I managed on the road all those years ago. I use my phone for everything now, from trip planning to organization to communication, and navigation, and so much more. Not to mention, it's also my camera. Now, I could wax poetic about the good old days of not having smartphones. On the whole, I think we are way too addicted to and reliant on them, and it takes us out of the present moment and we are less engaged with our environments because of it. That said, it's a price to pay, and ultimately I do think that our lives and our travels are substantially better with them. But with our phones also come a host of risks. If they're lost, damaged, or stolen, the repercussions can be pretty serious because we are now so dependent on our phones. In a minute, I will outline the exact steps that you can take to minimize those risks. By the way, if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Nora. I've been a digital nomad since 2006. As one of the OG digital nomads and travel bloggers, I love helping people design their lifestyles and arrange their affairs to travel long term. On this channel, I'm all about helping you travel smart in style with general travel tips, anecdotes, gear reviews, and much more. If that interests you, please subscribe, give me some thumbs up, and join in on the discussions in the comments. We have a thriving community of amazing travelers who share some pretty cool tips. In fact, this video is a direct result of a viewer who commented with a request that I create an episode about cell phone security. He shared a story about how he was in a taxi in Casablanca on a hot day. When the driver told him to close the window, he asked why. Apparently, when there's a traffic jam, people will walk between the cars and snatch phones right out of the hands of unsuspecting people in back seats. This leads me directly into my first few tips about protecting your phone from theft. Be aware of your surroundings. If your face is buried in your phone, you might miss some crucial visual cues that something is happening that could put you or your phone at risk. Don't do anything on your phone while you're walking. No texts, not even maps. In a split second, somebody can snatch your phone right out of your hand. One way to prevent that from happening is to secure your phone. In another video, some viewers of this channel have said that they swear by lanyards, that they wear crossbody. This allows you to have your phone in your hands and use it when you need it, and it protects your phone from being dropped or snatched. One thing though, if you're in a place where phone thefts or petty theft is common, I wouldn't walk around with the phone always dangling from a lanyard on around your neck or even crossbody it might make you a target for theft. However, if you have it on a lanyard with a jacket on top that has an inside pocket, you can tuck your phone inside the pocket to keep a low profile. Speaking of pockets, check out my episode about protecting yourself from common pickpocket scams. I'll leave a link in the description and the first comment. Speaking of scams, a quick internet search will reveal the latest scams designed to part you with your phone that are prevalent at your destination. Things like the taxi in Casablanca situation. If you know about it in advance, you keep your window up when you're in a car. And researching scams is not about fear mongering or being scared that the world is bad. It's about simply being properly prepared and keeping yourself and your stuff safe. This video is not sponsored, but I do want to give some love to a company whose gear I've been using since 2009. PackSafe makes anti-theft bags, backpacks, luggage, and accessories. If you've been watching my channel for long, you've probably seen me mention or show this, which is their crossbody tech bag, which I wear on my travel days to hold my passport, phone, and wallet, and other essentials that I have to keep on my body at all times. I also use it at my destination as a minimalist purse. If I need a bit more space for the basics, plus some sunglasses, for example, I have the micro crossbody, which has a little bit more space, and if I want more space yet, I have the Lunar Crossbody, which also I think is pretty stylish. For these two and some of their other bags as well, they have this brand new feature to secure zippers that works way better than some of their previous mechanisms. To secure it, all I have to do is close it like that. 
Then to open it, all I have to do is pinch it here and then I can open the bag. It's super easy and low profile to use and with a bit of practice, it will stop petty crimes of opportunity from happening. If someone's trying to open your bag and grab your phone undetected, this feature will present just enough of an obstacle to get them to target somebody else. One thing that I know some people do if they're visiting places with high crime rates is they'll carry a decoy phone, sometimes referred to as a burner phone. It's a cheap phone that you put a local SIM card into and then you can use it in public. And the idea is you wouldn't be heartbroken if it were lost or stolen. You can then either leave your good phone at home or tucked away in a really secure spot. Personally, I haven't done this. One of my challenges with it is the fact that my phone is also my camera and I use my camera a fair bit. A decoy phone isn't likely to have a camera of similar quality. If I'm in a situation where it's not safe to have my phone out in public, I'll just leave it in my purse and I don't take photos. But it technically doesn't protect me from having it stolen if I'm robbed. I'm curious, leave a comment if you use a decoy phone and where in the world you've used it. I'd really like to know what you do with your real phone when you've got the decoy. So far, these tips will help you protect your physical phone, but that's only half the battle. Protecting what's on your phone is the next trick. So implementing these next few tips systematically will help you do that. We may start with some simple stuff, but stay tuned. There are a couple of plot twists in here that I only discovered in fact checking for this video. First up, set up your phone's screen lock. This prevents somebody from accessing anything without your pin code or your fingerprint or your face ID. I highly recommend enabling the face ID or the fingerprint feature, depending on your phone, since if somebody sees you enter your pin by looking over your shoulder and then they take your phone, they can access it. If you have multiple pairs of glasses or if you regularly wear a mask, make sure that you set up additional profiles on your face ID so it still recognizes you. You'll still need to set up a pin code, so make sure that it's something relatively complicated that can't be easily guessed, but that you can also remember. Many phones also give you the option to erase the phone automatically if somebody enters the wrong code a certain number of times. This is a good security measure if you wish to enable it. Your phone also has an app built in that allows you to track it remotely called Find My, as in Find My Phone. If your phone goes missing, you can log into your account on any other device and you can see where your phone is and you can track it down. Depending on your settings, you can also remotely erase the contents of your phone. This feature helped me find my phone when I lived in the Caribbean and my phone fell out of my pocket when I was getting on my scooter. When I got home and didn't have my phone, I had no idea where I'd left it. Using the Find My app helped me track it down and it was right there waiting for me. However, there is one thing to note about the Find My app. It only works when it's connected, when the phone is connected to either Wi-Fi or a cell signal. This means if somebody takes your phone and then they put it on airplane mode, you won't be able to see where your phone is. This also prevents you from being able to erase your phone remotely. That said, if the perpetrator has it in airplane mode, they may not be able to access any sensitive data on your phone until they reconnect, depending on how you store your data, that is. And then when they reconnect, you can use Find My to establish a connection and either track down the phone or erase it. If someone gets their hands on your phone, you can put an extra layer of protection between them and your data with two-factor authentication. Any apps that you have that contain sensitive information usually have an option to set up two-factor authentication. Once it's set up, logging into the account will require you to enter your password as usual and then to verify that login with either a text message, phone call, email, or a code that you can retrieve from an authentication app. When it comes to cell phone security while browsing and transacting online, you will definitely want a VPN for a few reasons. First of all, there may be accounts and websites that won't give you access unless you were technically in your home country. My electric company, randomly, is an example. When I'm abroad, I can't download my monthly bills and then pay them from a foreign IP address. So I turn on my VPN and I set it to Canada. The same goes for streaming services that only give you access if you are in your home country. But much more importantly, a VPN encrypts your online activities while you're on a public Wi-Fi connection. Airports, hotels, and coffee shops are prime targets for hackers. If you're on these Wi-Fi connections, even if they have passwords, anybody else who's on the same network and knows what they're doing can access your device and everything you're doing on it. Your very simple and very inexpensive solution is to have a VPN. Simply open the app, enable the connection, and you're protected. You can choose either the closest available connection or you can choose the country you wanna to connect to. It's that simple. I've been a paying customer of NordVPN since, I don't even know when, 2006, I think. 
Prior to that, I tried out a lot of different VPNs and Nord has been one of the smoothest, most cost-effective and secure. They have great ratings. And if you sign up for a two or three year plan, it's just a couple of bucks a month. It's totally worth it. I will leave a special link in the description and the first comment for you to try them out. Speaking of Wi-Fi connections, whether or not you have a VPN, don't connect to any unknown Wi-Fi networks. I see them a lot in airports. I open my Wi-Fi to connect to the airport's official hotspot, and there might be multiple networks available that might or might not be the airport's actual network. If you connect to one of these fake networks, your data will be at risk. Now, if you're using a VPN, your chances of having your information stolen, even if you accidentally connect to one of these networks, is dramatically reduced. There are some nuances to this though, but ultimately, just use a VPN. And don't connect to any unknown Wi-Fi hotspots. A friend of mine has an app called Wi-Fox. It's a continuously updated map of wireless passwords from airports and lounges around the world. It has a bunch of cool features to help you connect to the best Wi-Fi network for your airport and even your exact location in the airport. And using the app to get on the best Wi-Fi network also reduces your chances of you logging into a fake network. If your phone does get irrevocably lost or stolen, you're definitely gonna want a backup. The easiest way to back up your phone is through your device's native cloud backup service. Depending on how much stuff you have on your phone and what you choose to back up, you may need to pay a small fee for the extra storage space. While losing sentimental photos and videos could be heart-wrenching, losing all of your contacts and key pieces of information could be very problematic while in an emergency while you're abroad. So not only do I suggest that you have a cloud backup of key information, but I also suggest that you have a paper backup of the stuff that you really need. This is why I keep a paper copy of my passport with my travel insurance information in my wallet at all times. When I was in a serious accident in the Caribbean and had to go to hospital, my phone was damaged and it wouldn't work. My life might have been a lot more complicated if I didn't have that paper copy of my ID and insurance with me. Smartphones are amazing, but don't fall into the trap of letting it be your only source of access to everything you have. For more travel insurance tips, check out my popular episode about travel insurance mistakes and claims tips. It's a must-see. Next up, I don't know what I would do without my password manager. It helps with the security of all your accounts by having super secure passwords that you don't need to remember. It's also a way of backing up your information. If your phone goes missing, your passwords and anything else that you store in the database are accessible on any device with your master password, which is the only password that you need to actually remember. And it encrypts everything. And it automatically enters your super secure passwords for you when you log into your accounts. So you don't have to fiddle around typing them with your thumbs. The same goes with payment information, which the password manager can automatically enter for you. This is super convenient and a time saver, but I only recently realized just how much of a travel security measure this is as well. I saw a friend of mine typing in an account password on her phone, and I could see exactly what she was typing. Somebody with nefarious intentions looking over her shoulder would then have had her password information. I personally am a big fan of 1Password. If you've never used a password manager before, it takes a bit of time to set it all up and get your passwords in the program. But once they're there, it's easy to enter, edit, change, and generally manage your password and login information. When you sign up for any new online accounts, 1Password can also suggest strong passwords and then save your new login information right away. It syncs across all of your devices as well. One piece of advice though, if you have a tablet or laptop, I suggest getting the app and the passwords initially set up on that device instead of on your phone because the interface is much easier to use. Also, download the browser extensions on those devices for ultimate usability. I'll leave a link to 1Password in the description and the first comment. I've been a paying customer for a couple of years now and I love it. Although this next one isn't a travel specific tip, it is an important one for cell phone security, and that is to keep your phone up to date. Operating system updates often contain fixes of new bugs or security issues, and it's important to stay on top of these. You can enable automatic updates on your phone, which I recommend, but I also suggest going into your update center periodically to ensure that you have the latest update, since I've personally noticed that some updates aren't automatic for one reason or another. When traveling, you might be tempted to use public charging stations at airports to keep your devices powered up. But beware, these convenient USB ports can be a trap for unsuspecting travelers. 
Known as juice jacking, cyber criminals can use these stations to install malware or steal data from your device. Instead, always use your own charging block and plug it into a standard electrical outlet or invest in a portable power bank. I have a lot of videos about cell phones and travel security, and I'll leave links to the most relevant ones in the description. But one that you might find interesting is about paying for your stuff with your phone. If you think it's not a secure way to pay for your stuff, join the club. I thought so too, until I discovered something that surprised me. I share what I learned in the video that's gonna show up on the next screen about RFID protection. So keep watching, keep liking, and keep traveling. I'm Nora Dunn, AKA The Professional Hobo, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.